Good evening, everyone. The 43rd Annual Upper Peninsula Sports Hall of Fame Induction Banquet on Saturday brought more than 200 people to the Island Resort and Casino in Harris. The inductees range from Hancock, Lorium, and Menominee, all the way to Besmer and Sault Ste. Marie. The speakers thank family and friends who helped them achieve success along the way. Tonight, we'll let you hear three cute and funny stories from the banquet. It wasn't always easy being one of the first women sports writers. I'll never forget my first assignment. I was supposed to write a story about a high school soccer team. When I called the coach's house, his wife answered the phone. She had never heard of a woman sports writer, ever. And she wouldn't give him the phone. My brothers and sisters and I always saw her as just a mom who was a lot of fun. She was always willing to play kickball, basketball, or catch with us. I did realize that she was pretty special to the community when neighborhood boys would come to the door, ring the doorbell, and ask if our mom could come out and play. <laughs> My ex-wife, she, she was from France, and uh, she didn't understand the American way of playing ball and stuff, you know, but it kind of made us even because I couldn't speak French either. <laughs> Other inductees included Whitney Bell of Sault Ste. Marie, Mike Caruso of Iron Mountain, Terry Duvall of Escanaba, John Labrossier of Nama, Bill Lucier of Hancock, Mike Fotenhauer of Menominee, and Jill Gobert Van Dam of Perkins. Now let's go to some tennis between Marquette and Ishpeming. Marquette's Josh Downs had a good day in first singles against Ishpeming's Thomas Blue, getting the winner right past Blue as he wins in two sets. In first doubles, Tony Gravadoni serving for Ishpeming. A good rally, though, between the two teams. But Josh Penrose's shot will hit the net just short, so Noah Gannon and Mike Wiedela will take the point. They will also take the win in two sets, 6 0 and 6 2. On the day, Marquette will defeat Ishpeming 7 1. Over in Nagani, both schools played for around four hours. Here's first singles between Kingsford's Adam Sabo in the near court and Nagani's Parker Bowman in the far court. Sabo gets the winner past Bowman to take the point. He go on to win in three sets. To the first set of first doubles, Nagani's Doug Lindbaum's return is just short. So Daniel Harrington and Joe Gregory take the 3-2 lead. This match also went into three sets. And Michael Anderson from Nagani will get the winner for the minors. But the boys from Kingsford will rally in the third set 6-3 to claim the match. And Kingsford and Nagani will play to a 4-4 tie. In some more tennis, seniors Quinn Leroy and Michael Oslin led Westwood to an 8-0 victory over Norway. In track and field, Gwynn hosted a tri-meet between the model towners Westwood and Norway. In the tri-meet, the Patriots take first place with 82 points, followed by Gwynn with 54 points and Norway in third. In the girls' meet, Westwood also takes first place, followed by Gwynn and Norway will take third. Let's check in on the Marquette Blues as they hosted the Ishpeming Blue Storm. Bottom of the fourth, Blues up 4 nothing. Colton Wiggins gets the RBI single, driving home Sam Leon. That was part of a five-run fourth as Marquette leads 5 nothing. Top of the fifth, Tyrus Milimaki will be safe at first off of the air, but Ishpeming cannot capitalize. Later in the inning, Peyton LeBombard, RBI single, brings in Trevor Bretonia, makes it 9 nothing. Marquette. A couple batters later, Riley Lynch blasts this into right center field for an RBI double as Marquette shuts out Ishpeming 11 to nothing in five innings. Riley. Blues pitcher Ryan Hansen allowed only one hit in those five innings. The Braves baseball team would win their doubleheader against Superior Central 22 to two, then 12 to one. North Central will defeat Stevenson by 11 runs, 12 to one. Then in some softball, while this Norway team can hit, they'd win their doubleheader today, 17 to one over first year team Iron Mountain in four innings, then 14 to four in five innings. Over in Lance, the Copper Kings take the first game 13 to eight, but both teams would end up in a tie in the second one, 15 all. In Rapid River, the Rockets go 2-0, defeating Munising 15-5, then 13-3. 
And in Manistee, the Emeralds impressive offensively as well, defeating Gwyn 11 to 1 in five innings, then 18 to 1 in four innings. And also in baseball, the Brewers and the Cardinals heading into the 10th inning. They're tied at three. For more sports scores and highlights, visit our website, UpperMichiganSource.com. The Brewers have been playing some pretty good baseball lately. They have, and poor Gene Segura can't be back in the lineup, you know, after getting That's gashed right. by Ryan Braun. Yeah. All right, thanks, Lily. Well, just ahead tonight, Marquette's Alternative High School is getting statewide recognition. We'll explain why, but first, here's Jimmy Fallon.